everybody, it's Paul from Alexander Knife Sharpening and Laser Engraving. Today, what I'm gonna show you how to do is how to change out the lens on your P3 X Tool CO2 laser. I have a really nice knife that came in for engraving. It has a wood handle on it. I wanna do the engraving on the P3. It's gonna be tiny because the handle's pretty tiny. So I decided this would be a good time to switch out our medium size lens for our small lens. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. Shouldn't take that long. Let's get started. Here we go. I opened up the P3. When it's turned off like it currently is, I can move anything around. Nothing's locked in place. So we're just gonna slide this out to where we can work with it. I did take my cutting nozzle off. I'm just gonna put this in a safe place. I usually put it up on the shelf here. We're going to leave it up there for now. We're going to need a small screwdriver. Now your X-Tool came with one in a small kit that came with your laser. All right, so here's the little kit that your P3 came with. And inside there, there is a small screwdriver and some other tools. We're just going to grab this because we will need this at some point. I'm just going to put that to the side for now. And the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna remove the existing case. Now this right here comes off. It's magnetic. All you gotta do is pull it off. That's it. Now I'm just looking to see if it's dirty in there. I've been doing some wood cutting and it's not a bad idea to go ahead and clean things out. So the lens is inside here and you can see this one's got a big m on it i have all three lenses but this is the first time i'm going to use the small lens so we're going to be removing the medium lens and replacing it with the small lens and i'll show you how that comes i'll show you how to assemble it and then how to reinstall the uh, new lens when we get it out of here so the first thing i'm going to do I am gonna go grab a pair of rubber gloves. I have a couple other things that I'm gonna use. They're not absolutely necessary. I think I've mentioned to you guys before, I used to be a photographer and I still do a lot of photography and I have a lot of lens stuff. I just happen to have because of being a photographer. I used to clean my own camera sensors. So I have this silicone mat here from a company called visible dust which is just an anti-static one i'm going to put that down there for a second and then i have lots and lots of, of brushes and things to clean off lenses with i have special air dusters that are filtered that don't blow anything around not all that is uh, necessary but i did grab one tool here because these lenses are the same as like a camera lens. They have a retainer ring in there. I just so happen to have a lens screwdriver. Again, it's not something that's necessary to do this, but it can be uh, helpful. You can probably get by with just your fingernail, but I am just gonna show you a couple of things here that can make these jobs a little bit easier. Let's get back to over here and starting with taking apart our one lens and getting this one out of here. First, I'm gonna go put on those rubber gloves I talked about. I just think that's a good idea. It will keep you from getting any oils on your lenses, which is never a bad idea. Whenever you're dealing with lenses on anything, it's not a bad idea to wear some rubber gloves just to help cut down on the oils in your fingertips, which very easily show up on glass if you've ever touched a camera lens with your fingers. Having cleaned many sensors in my day, you gotta be even more careful with a camera sensor, but. All right, so we're just gonna come in here and the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna take these two screws out. It's pretty simple. There's one. Each lens kit actually comes with additional screws but you you can put the same ones back in if you want just be careful when we take that out all right and we're just going to slide this whole thing out all right so this is our camera lens or not camera lens this is our laser lens so this is our medium lens and we're going to be swapping this out now interestingly 
when you order them, they don't come assembled. So I'm going to show you, we're going to have to put the small lens together. So we're going to jump over there and get our small lens put together. And then we're going to find a safe place uh, to put this lens in the meantime, because eventually we'll be going back in the machine. The medium lens is probably going to be the one you use the, the most. And I'm sure some people uh, probably didn't even purchase the additional lenses. But since we're doing such a small engraving, I want to make sure I have the best detail uh, possible for this small engraving on a knife. When you get your lenses, they come just like this in two boxes. There's going to be one that's marked for the lens, and then the other one has the casing in it. And you'll see here, I've already pulled my small lens out. So this is the casing for the small lens. So just like we have the medium one here, this is our small one. And these are just the parts that we're going to use to assemble that. I also in here have the large lens. And when we're done, we can probably just use this case. Once it's assembled, so you'll see I can fit that lens in here and keep my lens safe. So I put the medium lens in here in this one that's marked small lens. They don't give you a case uh, with the one that comes with your machine. You can just put it in here temporarily because you don't have to worry about them getting mixed up because they are marked with a big M on there to let you know that that is the medium lens. The only thing you would have to be careful of is would be putting the wrong lens inside the case here. So next thing we have to do is open up this uh, lens part where the lens is in here. And you can see I even wrote on them when I first got them because I knew at some point I was going to take them apart. I didn't want to get them mixed up. So I wrote on the tape, small lens. I don't believe it's marked on here. It isn't. It's not marked on here anywhere. So just make sure until you get them put into their uh, proper holder that you don't get those mixed up. And as you can see on mine here, they put plenty of tape on here. I'm just going to cut it. And inside there we have these little tiny pieces of paper. We won't need this now and we won't need it in the future because we're going to use a little plastic case to store our lenses in there. Now inside of here you'll see we have some paper. It's just lens paper and rolled up inside of here is the lens. Now, the important thing is putting it in the proper way and we want to try and handle this as little as possible. So I'm going to grab it from the edges. Oop. You can see why I put this nice little silicone dust protector down here that's made for camera sensors because, yeah, I could have dropped that. It would have hit the floor. So I'm glad that I had that there. Now, if you look closely at your lens, you will also see that we have a flat side and a curved side. The flat side is going to go facing down. Also in our pack is a retaining washer and a retaining screw. We are going to take that lens out flat side down and we're going to put it inside of our lens holder. Then we're going to drop in that white retaining washer. And then on top of it goes this retaining screw. And this is a very typical like lens screw that you also see in cameras. And that's why I just so happen to have a lens tool most people aren't going to have a lens tool and it's not really necessary with the lens tool you can make sure it's all the way in tight and if it's ever stuck or if you couldn't get it out you can take something like this and it's designed to fit right in those two little notches and then you can just give it a nice little turn and be sure you're snugged all the way down. 
again, absolutely not necessary. You can probably just grab it with your uh, finger. The only time something like that would be very helpful, though, if you hadn't taken it out in a while and it was a little bit stuck and you can't get it with your finger, a lens tool uh, could be very useful for getting it out and cleaning things. Definitely not something that's necessary. So we have our lens replaced. I don't need to use the new screws. I could just hold them. The same screws can go right back in there. And what I am gonna do uh, before we go any further, just since I have mine out here, I'm gonna assemble both of my lenses so that all of them are then put together. So I'm gonna take this case, which is for my large lens, which I also have not used yet. And we're just gonna put that one together. Everything I've done so far with the P3, all the jobs you've seen me do have all been with that medium size lens, but I do have these other lenses. So I figured, hey, why don't we start using them, especially now that we have this job that's really suited for it. Okay, so here's our large one. Now, if you use a lens tool, just remember, don't put too much pressure on there. Don't be crazy cranking it down. You don't wanna break your other lens either. And since I have uh, both of the, since I have all the lenses for this and we have everything out, we might as well assemble the large lens. When we do need it, it'll be ready to go and we can just simply swap it out. And we can just simply grab it and use it when we're ready to go and use the large lens down the road from now. And here's the flat side. I can clearly see this is the curved side. So again, same thing, gonna make sure I'm holding this the proper way and we're going to drop that right in there. There we go. Now I'm going to again grab my washer and retaining screw. I'll probably put all those screws in one bag. All right. We're going to take our white washer just like the same just like last time, drop that in. Take our retaining ring, put that right on top, get it started by hand. Fairly easy to do. Not necessary, but it's nice if you have one. Here is a lens ring or a lens screwdriver. Now, if you've ever had to take a camera lens apart, this is an absolute must. Can be really hard to get some of them apart. All right, we're good. So we're gonna switch these two right now because this one I believe is the large box it is. This one will be going into the large box where it will live and it will be going into this where I'm going to store my lenses for when I need them. This is our medium lens, so that's gonna go right in there next to it. I'm gonna consolidate these screws into one bag and I can get rid of these little extra bags. Okay, let's take our lens. We're gonna go back over to the P3 and reinstall this lens. This is fairly simple. All we gotta do, slide this right in to its proper position or take our two screws, reinstall them And this is good to know too, even if you don't have to change your lenses, you may have to clean your lenses. If you only have the medium lens, but you do a lot of cutting and a lot of stuff with it, every so often you should take those lenses out, check them, and you might have to clean them off. You're gonna wanna get some good lens paper and some good lens cleaner to use on there. All I have to do now is reinstall this cover, and this is magnetic. So it just snaps right into place. Now, when we turn on the machine, it should automatically recognize that I have put in the small lens. But if it doesn't, I can, I'm gonna show you how you can go in and we can tell it that the small lens is in there. All right, so now I'm just simply going to the back of my machine, turning it back on. It will fire up reset itself and now we're going to go over to the computer and 
I will record my screen there and show you what's going on at the computer. Okay, I'm recording my screen. I just fired the computer back up. We're gonna come up here to uh, connect it and we're just gonna select P3 and it just reconnected. Okay, if you come down here where it says focus module, you'll see there's small, medium, and large. It did not automatically detect mine. So I'm gonna click this and we gotta close the lid it's telling us. So I'm gonna go over and close the lid. All right, lid is closed. And now it says small. If you look down there, see where it says S. So now it knows it has the small focus module. So that's good. Device ready, open lid and we're good to go. We've got our lens changed and everything is set to go. So this should be fun. I'm going to, you know what? Let's real quickly take a, uh, a piece of wood and do some tiny text just to get a feel for how this small lens is gonna look. So let's just pause this for a second. We'll see how the uh, tinier lens does on tiny tech. Threw in some scrap, this is walnut. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a measurement. So by clicking this, I can tell it exactly where I want it to measure from. We're gonna measure from this spot right here. And the lens is gonna jog over there and take a measurement. And now we got our measurement. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a little just kind of a test idea to get an idea of how certain size font looks. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a rectangle and that's pretty good. I, we don't need to go, go crazy here. What I'm going to do here is that's going to be a cut layer. We're going to cut out at some point what we're doing here. This is walnut. So I'm just going to go and this is a three millimeter plywood walnut. And here's walnut. One eighth is three millimeters. That's good. We're going to click apply. We got that. Okay. Now what I want to do first is let's do some text testing. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and I'm going to take my text here and I'm just going to go and I'm going to make this engrave and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this way down and we're going to put it right in this box. I'm going to make the height. Let's go one millimeter. So that's going to be pretty darn tiny. And I'm going to copy it and I'm gonna paste it, and then I'm gonna take this second one, and I'm gonna go two millimeters. I'm gonna slide these down a little bit here. Okay, we're gonna copy, we're gonna paste again. And this time we're gonna go three, and I'm gonna paste again, and I think you get the idea. I'm just trying to get a good idea of how these different sizes are gonna are gonna work. Chart's all done. We're just doing uh, one through five millimeters to give us an idea how everything's gonna engrave. So I'm hoping the one millimeter and two millimeters actually look pretty good because that's pretty tiny uh, writing for on here. Uh, I want a little bit darker. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to go with this one down here, the 20, and we're going to change this to, let's go to 220. All right. And I feel pretty good about all of that. We're going to go to this orange layer. That's our cut layer. All right, here we go. Hitting process, hitting start. We are underway. That looks really good. That one millimeter print is totally readable. And that is tiny. All right, so there you go. Give you a pretty good idea of the ability of the small lens for your X-Tool P3. And that's what I'm gonna be using to be doing this knife engraving. That's gonna be going on a wood handle. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll talk to you soon.